Hello to all of you fabulous mind sisters and welcome to the winter exam school revision. I am so excited today we are doing physical science. I hope you guys are ready. I hope you guys have a whole lot of energy because you won't believe us in the studio. Tracy! Hello, Lundi. How are you? I'm good in yourself. Good, thank you. Good. I'm so good. To, it's good to see you. Always give oh, me that yeah. extra energy. You know? Good, because you are dressed for winter. It is winter. No, I think you and I live on a different <laughs> Like, it wasn't that cold today, but it's all right. It's all right. It's fine. No, it's, yes. it's me. Never it's mind. fine. <laughs> and she changed her hair. <sighs> okay. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys are ready for today's show. Remember, we are on Facebook. That is where you can simply find us. Let us know anything that you guys want to ask Tracy. I will be able to pass it on to her. That is www.facebook.com forward slash mindset TV. If you don't have any Facebook, ask mommy, ask daddy. It's okay. You can email to, through to us. That is questions at learn.co.za. As I said, we are doing physical science. Any specific topic or just questions? No, we're going all over the place. We've got some physics. We've got some chemistry. chemistry. We've got some physics from grade 11. So, yeah, no, we're just jumping all over the place so today. So it's a fruit salad. It is a little, yes. Okay, so I hope you guys are ready. Calculators, study buddy, notebooks, everything that you guys need for today's session. I hope it is ready right now because I'm going to stop talking and hand over to Tracy. <sighs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, so let's dive straight in, okay? And we really are all over the place. We're going to start with a Doppler question, okay? And it's from Amantla. I think that's how I spell it. Said, um, Amantle. Amantle. Because yeah. it's cla. It's the yes. e at the end. Okay, there we go. See, I learned <laughs> something new every day. Okay, so the siren of a stationary police car. So as we read this, we're going to go through... What is important? So we've got a stationary police car emits a sound of wavelength 0.5 meters. Now, 0.5 meters. So what they're saying is the police car is my source. So the police car is stationary for now. And so now we know the wavelength of my source is 0.55 meters. Okay. With its siren on, the police car now approaches a stationary listener. So the police car is moving and the listener is stationary. At a constant velocity on a straight road, assuming that the speed of sound in air is 345, so that's V is 345 meters per second. They now ask you to do something. Now remember, grade 12s, this assumption that the speed of sound is 345 is quite important because the speed of sound is not a constant. It's not like the speed of light or any of the electromagnetic spectrum, okay, which is 3 times 10 to the 8. Sound changes. And this is the one thing they sometimes like to ask us, okay? So if we add something in here, they can go, why does speed travel faster in a liquid than in air? And it's because the particles are closer together and it then travels even faster in a solid. Now, the speed of sound, which will be given to you or you'll have enough information to work it out, will range between 330, 345. Normally, even that seems a bit high, but it's okay. You don't need to learn what the speed of sound is. They need to give it to you, okay? So, now they ask, Will the wavelength of the sound wave observed by the listener be greater than, smaller than, or equal to 0, 0.55? Now, be careful before you answer this, okay? Because automatically in your head, you go, oh, it's Doppler. So we know as the car approaches, well, you should know as the car approaches, frequency increases. As it goes away, frequency decreases. So it must get smaller because it's, it's coming closer, okay? Or it must be getting bigger because it's getting closer, so frequency increases. But the question asks, what happens to the wavelength of the sound? Okay. Now, if the police car is getting closer to the person, the wavelength gets smaller. Okay. The wavelength gets smaller because frequency will increase. And remember, if here's my person, okay, we all know I can't draw, so just go with it. Here's my person, and here's my car. Okay, it's a car from who knows when, and he's going in that direction. As he comes closer, the wavelengths get closer together, and then they get, and I'm just going to do another color so you can see it. So it gets further away as on the other side, okay? So it's getting closer together, so the wavelength gets smaller, okay? 
Oh, name the phenomenon. Yay, we like this because that's an easy one. It's the Doppler effect. Okay? It's the Doppler effect. So that's quite important. Now, okay, now we get to the fun part because those questions, probably three marks, two or even one, two, one. Well, I don't know. Anyway, so back here we say now. Ooh, now they say to us, calculate the frequency of the sound waves observed, so FL, by the listener if the car approaches him at a speed of 120 kilometers per hour. Okay, so now we know we're looking for the listener's frequency. So we know listener's frequency because we're looking at Doppler is V plus or minus VL, V plus or minus VS over VS. So now we say to ourselves, okay, I know VL, perfect. I know V, perfect. VL, because the station, the listener is stationary, so I don't need to worry about that. Okay, VS. VS is 120 kilometers per hour. Can't use 120 kilometers per hour. Must be in meters per second. So the first thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to go, well, my source is going at 120 kilometers per hour. Now you need to learn the following, okay? Because they're never going to ask you how you work this out. To convert kilometers per hour to meters per second, okay? So to go kilometers per hour, per hour to meters per second, divide by 3.6. Okay, so what I've just written there is something you would write on your, ex on your exam paper when you get it, okay? So you remember. So I'm going to have to go 120 divided by 3.6. I can't do that in my head. Okay, so 120 divided by 3.3. Oh, no, who knows what that was. If, oh, no, you know, we're also going to change this to linear because I don't want all fractions. 120 divided by 3.6. 33,33 33, 33 meters per second. Okay, so that's cool. We've got that now. But we don't have FS. I need the frequency. I know the speed of sound. I know the wavelength. Where, ooh, where did it go? Wavelength, wavelength, wavelength. Ah, oh, now I've got to remember that. Okay, so now we're going back to grade 10 work that V equals F lambda. So if that's 345, and we want the frequency when my wavelength is 55, that means my frequency is 345 divided by 0.55. Okay, also can't do that in my head. Oh, no, five, five gives me 627.27. Okay, sounds about right. Okay, so I have all the information I need. Now I've got to put it into the equation. And this is where things start to get a little uh, for us, okay? But it's all right. So first and foremost, without exception, you write down the equation as given on your information sheet. Don't take the plus and minus out, okay? So frequency of the listener is velo vel velocity of sound. Velocity of sound, okay, plus or minus the velocity of the listener over plus or minus the velocity of sound. So, now we go. Now comes the fun part. So, and this is how I teach my kids to do it, okay, my own learners. I know the frequency, okay, it's 627,27. My listener isn't moving, so that's zero, so that means all I need at the top is the 345, okay? Now I'm gonna need 345, and here will be the 33,33. And now I have to decide, am I plusing or minusing? So now we're gonna to say to ourselves, well, the car is getting closer to the listener, so if it's getting closer to the listener, frequency must increase. If frequency must increase, then my bracket must be bigger than one, and I must minus the velocity of the source, okay? I must minus the velocity of the source. Now I've got everything I need. So 
Now this becomes a math problem. Okay, now we're going to put this in the calculator. So let's see what we've got. We've got 345 divided by 345 minus 33.33. 33. Okay, so that gives me 1,106 times 627.27. And we get 694,35 hertz. And it increased, which is what I expected. And so we're all happy because it increased. It's what I wanted. Nice and easy. Now, this question would be worth quite a few marks, grade 12s, because there's lots to it, OK? Don't get worried about the fact that you weren't given FS. Work through it like I did. See, I put that little question, I did the, the equation, I worked through this equation, said, what do I know, what don't I know, and then worked it out from there. Okay, sometimes they lead you a little bit with this part, sometimes they don't. All depends on how they feel. So this question would probably be worth um, one, two marks for that. Okay, you don't get this mark, you don't get a mark for that until you substitute it. Then, so this would then be, come now, three, this would probably be four, five, six, so five to six marks for this, all depending on your examiner, so it's not too bad. Okay, so now we're going to do an exam question. So now we're going to the exam question. Okay, so that's what we're going to look, oh, no, we're not. I lied. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> should actually read all the questions anyway. Yeah, you see. Sorry. See, live shows. Anyway, so now they say, how will the answer in part C change if the policeman moves away from the listener at 120 kilometers per hour? So my answer in part C showed that the frequency increases because it was coming towards the listener. If it's now moving away from the listener, my answer in part C will decrease. Okay, now it's not going to decrease by the same factor. This isn't a factor thing, all right, because it's going to decrease quite significantly. But that doesn't matter. Then one asks how much it changes. By they just wanted to know will it change? Absolutely, it'll decrease because now the car's moving away. Now we really are done with that question and we really are going to do an exam question now. So but we're not doing the exam question. Before but, we quickly move okay, on from we that, that question. Yes. There is um, a Suela on Facebook, and she wants to know, as the listener approaches the frequency, will, uh, as the learner approach, will the frequency increase or decrease? Increase. increase. Whether the source is getting closer to the observer or the observer is getting closer to the source, it'll increase. As long as they're coming closer together, it doesn't matter which one's moving, it'll increase. If they're moving further apart, they will decrease. It doesn't matter which one's moving. Okay. Okay, it really, really doesn't matter. No problem. Okay, so <coughs> now we're going to do the exam question. Okay, you ready? Great. So here we go. And we, anyway, an isolated point charge, and it's a really nice question, this is electrostatics, okay? Isolated point charge, Q, is located in space as shown in the diagram below. Great. Point Q contributes to an electric field as shown. Great. Point X is located three millimeters away from point Q. Okay, now calculate the magnitude of the electric field at point X. So, with this question, grade 12s, remember that X doesn't have a charge to it. So, you have two equations to work out electric fields. Either you can use E equals K. Q over R squared, or you can use E equals F over Q. Okay, now it should be a big Q, doesn't matter. I can't use that equation. I'm going to rub it out in a second as well, because one, I don't know the force, and two, X is not a charge. Okay, this Q has to be the charge in the field. And there isn't a charge in the field, okay? So I know that I'm going to use E equals KQ over R squared because I'm looking for the electric field that's being produced 
by Q a certain distance from Q. Okay, so if I look at this, we're going to go E equals K Q over R squared. K is a constant, and that's 9 times 10 to the 9. Q from here is 6,5 times 10 to the minus 12. It's actually quite nice because we didn't have to convert it. Now, R is 3 millimeters. Remember, we never work in millimeters. We need it in meters. So we would normally go 3 millimeters, okay, we can, we're going to have to divide by 1,000, but that's going to give me a really horrible number. So what I'm going to do rather is go 3 times 10 to the minus 3, and don't forget to square it, okay? I'm times it by 10 to the minus 3 because that's the same as dividing by 1,000, okay? Now, all I have to do here is put this onto, well, <laughs> not onto, into my calculator, okay? So watch. This is what we're going to do. 9 times 10 to the 9 times 6.5 times 10 to the minus 12. So that's my top, okay? Divided by 3 to the minus 3 all squared. And we get 6,500 6, newtons per coulomb. They didn't want direction, okay? They just said magnitude. No direction necessary. So that's nice. Though, just as a quick one, if you look at this, be careful here. Your mag, your, it's 6,5. It's moving away from Q. That means this is positive. So my direction of my magnetic field at X is to the left, okay? Then, now, same question, we haven't, ooh, ah, life gets fun. Now they say, now remember over here we had 6,5 times 10 to the 12, minus 12 coulombs, okay? Now they say we have a point charge R carrying a charge of 6,5 times 10 to the minus 12 coulombs is placed 3 millimeters away. What is the net electric field, okay? So, that should just say electric field at point X. Now, you need to recognize something, because this looks all, but it's not really, because net field means that I've got to take the field at X, because of R, and add it to the field at X because of Q, okay? But recognize what they've done here with this question. My distance between X and R and X and Q is the same. My charges are the same. That means the value of these two force of these two fields will be exactly the same. Okay, which was six thousand five hundred. We just worked that out. But we now have to consider direction. Now, electric fields are defined as the the direction of electric field is defined as the direction in which a positive test charge would go in that field. So. For Q, we said it's going to go to the left. For R, it's also positive. It's going to go to the right. Now, we have to choose a direction as positive, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, because Q is the first one I did, let's make Q's direction positive. That means R's direction is negative. So that means I'm going to go minus 6,500 plus... 6,500, and now this one's quite easy. I think we can all manage this one, hopefully. That's zero. Hasn't got a direction because it's zero. zero. And that's time for a break. Yes. <laughs> so we're going to take a quick ad break, and when we come back, there is still a whole lot of physical science. Remember, guys, you can always post your questions on our Facebook page. That is www.facebook.com forward slash Mindset TV. Now, you guys, go refresh your memory and come back just after this quick ad break. We'll